Eating disorders have the highest mortality rate of all mental illnesses at an estimated 10 to 15 percent. And in Canada, it's estimated that over a million people live with one. Eating disorders are medical illnesses that cause severe disturbances to a person's relationship with food. These disorders are debilitating at their best and life-threatening at their worst. They're not choices, diets, or phases. And yet, that's how our culture tends to treat them. For someone experiencing an eating disorder, that's an especially toxic message as it undercuts the seriousness of what they're going through and it makes it that much harder for them to get the help they need to recover. When we consider the way that these illnesses impair and threaten people's lives, why is it estimated that only 1 in 10 people who live with them will get treatment? Our society teaches us some incredibly harmful things about the way we're supposed to look. We grow up bombarded by images that tell us that it's only slim, fit people that lead happy lives. That the way we look dictates our very value as a person. The body positive movement has pushed back, embracing bodies of all abilities, races, sizes, and genders, and fighting for the idea that all bodies are good bodies. But it's still true that body image concerns are normal, and they start very young. It's estimated that girls start to express concerns about their own weight or shape by the time they're six years old. So from the moment you're born, you're learning that appearance ideals from your cultural context influence how you are perceived in the world, and you're becoming sharply aware of how you fit with them and how others fit with them. Your friends and family members may perpetuate these ideals, which makes it very difficult to accept yourself. And this is especially a formative force when you're growing up. Eating disorders can affect people of all ages, genders, racial identities, sexual orientations, socioeconomic backgrounds, and body shapes and sizes. But we don't see that diversity reflected in most media depictions of eating disorders. And the research and treatment plans devoted to eating disorders and body dissatisfaction tend to focus on people of specific ages, genders, races, and sizes. For those who are excluded, it can be especially difficult to recognize an eating disorder for both the person who's experiencing it and the people around them. Like, I, I really hate, like, the diagnosis of atypical anorexia because it, like, sets people up to feel like their experience of anorexia is different and, like, somehow, like, less valid than, like, um, someone who is, like, um, thin and chronically un underweight, like, because they have the same exact, like, set of symptoms, like, and the medical professionals, like, just struggle to see it. If we want change, we need to start treating eating disorders like the serious mental illness they are. We need to talk about how our relationship to our body and mind are linked. We need to push back against fat phobia and value people for who they are, not what they look like. And we need to speak up and recognize that anyone can struggle with an eating disorder. Because with recognition comes a path to support, to treatment, to recovery.